So there are problems uh, in the film industry and in the perception of the film industry, and there are three really big ones, and they've been institutionalized to the point that they can't be fixed. So this is not me so much complaining about them and offering an alternative, but rather just telling you about them because they're things people don't think about and they're things people don't know about. So problem one. It's my time and my dick fell off. What? I don't get it wrong, I don't make me so. Okay, so the way it works when a studio or a production company buys your script is that they then give notes on it to repair and more perfectly shape, ostensibly, it into a product they can sell. Now, there's times like with Chronicle, where they give you very, very few notes, and it's mostly your script. That's a movie I wrote. And then there's times like Victor Frankenstein, where you're, you rewrite it a lot, and they bring in other people to rewrite it, and they, they do all sorts of stuff to it. Uh, before it even ever gets made. Now, a lot of things that go into the development system end up somewhere called development hell. Development hell is a kind of purgatory that is occasionally also called turnaround, wherein a script has been rewritten and sat on and not moved forward and has had no actors or directors attached or too many actors or directors attached to the point that it's not going to get made. A script can sell for a lot of money and have a lot of momentum behind it and then disappear into the ether. This has happened with literally maybe nine or ten of my projects, but it's worth talking about a fundamental flaw with development, and that is rereading. When you first read something, it's great. The third time you read something, it's not as good. It feels predictable. Why isn't this joke funny anymore? But the idea of something getting stale because you're reading it again and again as an executive or a producer to give notes on it is not addressed within the process because the process itself is so loose. So that means a joke that's really funny can get cut because I don't know why that joke just isn't working anymore. This is a normal human thing that happens. The more you encounter something, the less effective it is. It's like the most basic thing ever, but in development, Notes that attack elements of the script that were working the first time destroy the movie it will eventually be. Thing two. It's my time. Check the loss it found. Can't find my dick because it fell on the ground. Now, a lot of people have talked about this. I'm not the first person to talk about this, but film reviews work differently now in the age of the internet. And it's really, really problematic. It's a gremlin in the way the whole thing works, which is that a number, a percentage number on a website, be it Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, any of them, cannot reflect opinions on art. It doesn't even say what most people think of it, just most critics. And have you ever met a film critic? Maybe you have, or maybe you haven't, but have you ever met someone who has a different opinion on a movie than you? I mean, like, I know a lot of people hear my opinions on movies and they go, I disagree with that guy. What if in another world I'd become a film critic? My review would be just as valid as any of the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. You see, you enter a sort of void. That number puts opinion into a void. Film critics used to be read by specific people. Like, you would get the newspaper, and there would be the reviews of the movie, and you would know if your taste sunk up with that critic's taste. But now that all the critics are available to everyone, and opinion has been distilled into thumbs down, thumb up, by Siskel and Ebert, you, you enter this, like, insane world where a movie can have 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, but no one you know likes it, or a movie can have 40%, but all your friends love it. And it creates this sort of weird... Uh, tidal elitism, where some movies are universally well-reviewed by the momentum of their own good reviews. No one wants to be in the minority. Polarizing movies end up with lower scores. It's crazy. Problem three. So if you find it, please email me pictures at isthisyourdick at farmersonly.com. This is a huge problem. The people who make stuff aren't necessarily the people who would watch stuff. So you know what I'm talking about, like, development? Well, a lot of people within the film industry who started in other industries, whether they were at law school or business school, aren't necessarily film fans. They're not fanboys. There's fanboys in there, but nine times out of ten, you're dealing with people who came into it as a job. And this is, I'm not shaming these people, it's totally understandable, but it leads to you working on a project, say you're working on a horror movie at a studio, or at a TV, or, or, or at Netflix, whatever. Not Netflix, because they don't give notes. But, uh, you know, at anywhere, you're working on a horror movie. 
and you get an exec who hates horror movies. Suddenly you're getting notes on your most gruesome scenes. Isn't this a little gruesome? And it's like, yes, that's why it sold. What if your exec on a comedy just doesn't have the same sense of humor as you do? The notes distill and really disentangle, because that's what scripts are. They're a tangle of ideas and imagery and words, you know, dialogue. But once stuff starts getting pulled apart and made less of what it is, it can be destroyed. And it can be destroyed via the sort of taste of the wrong person having agency to make you change it. And by far the worst part of all this is they never move backwards, ever. Because the idea of going backwards is like saying they wasted time and money and no one wants to admit that they were wrong. So a script can get worse and worse and worse every draft, and everyone involved can be like, this isn't what we wanted, this isn't what we bought. And no one will admit they're wrong and move backwards, ever. Now development and notes are great. I've gotten great ones. In fact, I would say that most notes you get on your work will force you, if not to change it to directly address the note, to think about your work in a more analytical way and find holes that you would have never otherwise seen. That said, the fact that there's no rules about how to give notes or who gives them really, because the film industry, and I've tried to say this on here a million times, it's not like the tire industry. It's the Wild West. There's no defined roles. Even what a director does is technically liquid. You end up with stations of power that allow people to affect change in ways that don't help what a film is, which is ultimately even the most factory-made movie, a work of art. These three elements all relate to it being an art industry that has been transmogrified through necessity because of how much movies cost into a business. And they're worth knowing when you're going in.